Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, August 2nd. Okay, so we have the moon still in her rulership in Cancer Energy here for another day, which of course is bringing up all the feels. It's bringing up all the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, the inner child wounds, the mother wounds, the relationship wounds that many of us experienced throughout Cancer season. We are very lucky that the sun, of course, is in this Leo energy because this is helping us to really get in touch with our heart space. But instead of being kind of whiny, a little bit cryy, like we were in cancer season, we're kind of tapping into where it is that we have to be bold and brave and courageous enough to kind of push through, push through these emotions, push through this narrative, push through the realization that we are making a major change that many of us were kind of pushed into, forced into in a certain way. But at the same time, we also understand that we are also standing in our power. Whatever changes, whatever turbulence, whatever wild card energies were thrown at us that have us kind of pivoting on a new path, we're starting to realize that it's actually working out in our favor. We are meeting ourselves in a real, more raw, authentic state than ever before. And we're really gauging where it is that this new version of self wants to take us from here. So with all of that being said, today is a little bit of a bumpy ride. I will give you that heads up. Not horrible, but we are kind of flashing back to all of those wounds, all of that pain, all of that trauma, all of that discord and upset. Again, we have to feel it in order to heal it. We are much more empowered with some of the astrological placements this time around than we were in cancer season. So with all of that being said, there are eight different aspects taking place here today, five of them are going to involve the moon. We get off to a pretty decent start, actually, with the moon in Cancer energy, making a very positive interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, the wisdom that we've accumulated through those tough love life lessons. Jupiter is in Gemini energy, pushing us to expand on our perspective, on our understanding, really magnifying different options, different inner dialogues, different narratives that we could take that are very extreme here in the Gemini energy, but we have to kind of see both sides of the coin in order to actually make sense of a lot of the things that we were bringing to an end, bringing to a close by moving through that ocean of emotion. So we are getting a little bit of a bump in optimism. We're feeling pretty good, pretty strong, pretty confident within ourselves. We're choosing the higher mind, if you will, by really really leaning into the silver linings, plucking out those silver linings, really doubling down on those silver linings so that we don't lose ourselves in the negative Nancy narrative. Emotionally speaking, we're starting to understand that a lot of turbulence that we just went through was for our highest purpose, was for our growth, was for our evolution. But we're not going to sit in that positive, confident energy for too long because Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Also in this Gemini energy, very divided on where our time, energy, effort is actually needed. Mars is going to be semi-squaring, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Chiron, that wounded healer who is now retrograde in Aries energy. So again, just a reminder, now that Chiron is retrograde, we are more open to examining ourselves, identifying the problematic areas and doing something about it. We want to tackle these issues head on. We want to fix them, heal them, resolve them. We're not sweeping things under the rug. We're not moving into Delulu land and trying to kind of turn our head away from a lot of the issues that definitely need to be resolved. This particular interaction, though, is going to feel super uncomfortable. First of all, we're having a hard time standing up for ourselves. We're having a hard time defending what we believe in, what we believe is the right path for us, especially when it comes to other people. It's also going to be very uncomfortable because there's an agitation 
within us that we can't really put our finger on. It's almost like it got too big. We absolutely don't know what the trigger, what the activation is. It's just accumulation of all this frustration, all this anger, and we're having a hard time expressing it. We're having a hard time channeling it into a healthy outlet. We're having a hard time even understanding within ourselves what the actual issue is, let alone be able to articulate it and communicate it correctly outwardly. So it's almost as if we're confused about what we're actually kind of angry about. We're confused about where the agitation is actually stemming from. We're also overwhelmed with, I'm going to say frustration that we can't figure out 100% what our passion, what our desire, what our purpose actually is. And so this is definitely going to lead to some challenges within us. It may actually manifest, be projected onto people, onto the world around us, which of course isn't going to help things. But we are going to see where sitting in this funk and trying to really wreck our brains to figure out what the actual issue is. We're going to be very, very illuminated to some interesting connection, some light bulb moments, if you will. Those epiphanies, again, we have to sit in the uncomfortable thoughts, the uncomfortable feelings in order to really unearth where they stem from. And once we start kind of unearthing, it is an interesting dynamic to see what comes to the surface. So we're not going to sit in that funk for a horribly long time. We are going to have a little bit of luck on our side from the cosmos, from the universe, because Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who's in the Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac, is going to be making a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, still in this Gemini energy. So first of all, this is going to magnify where it is that we're trying really hard to focus on the positives, where it is that we are 100% reminding ourselves of all the good that is going on in our lives, what it is that we do know for sure, what we do know for certain, what we are interested in. This is essentially putting a spotlight on where it is that we have to pluck out the silver linings, where it is that, yep, we're feeling good, we're feeling comfortable with some aspects in our life. Because again, when we focus on the problem, sometimes it just feels like everything is a problem. This is a good energy shift to kind of take us out of that earlier aspect between Mars and Chiron. And this is just going to illuminate for us where it is that we're choosing the high road, the better narrative, the more confident in our dialogue, the more optimistic approach to our current circumstances. But of course, just when things get good, we have a dark force energy sweeping in again to pull us on back. This time, Venus is getting into the boxing ring. She's squaring off with Uranus, Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy that Venus naturally rules over. So, of course, the square doesn't feel good. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to highlight where it is that there's a tug of war, where it is that there are some growing pains taking place within us. This is going to put us in a situation where we're starting to see the challenge in this new version of self, this challenge in our heart space to pivot away from what it is that we thought we would be doing and really kind of anchor into this new path, this new direction. It's going to highlight the power struggle going on within us between our heart and our head, between the old realm, the old reality, the old version of self and what this new version of self actually wants to build, actually wants to create. It's almost like our values are changing, our interests are changing, the taste that we have out into the world, especially our taste in people, what we're we're attracted to, what we're interested in. Everything is kind of all up in the air. We know that we're under great pressure to make some major changes. We know that we're not very confident in actually taking action and making moves at this particular point in time. But we also know that when push comes to shove, we are getting closer to an action point than anything else. This is definitely going to create a disruption in our heart space. If you haven't listened to this week's Ascension forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so, especially to understand where the heart activations are taking place. But this is definitely going to disrupt our energy. This is going to disrupt what we think we love, what we think we're interested in, what we think we want to do, what we think we want to pursue. It's almost as if we are one part of us really wanting 
intimacy, wanting connection, wanting this new change, wanting a new realm, wanting a new reality, a new routine, everything new. But we also kind of want to just break away from what it is that we've been trying to wreck our brains about or trying to identify what it is that we actually want and just kind of stay the same. Again, the moon being in cancer energy, overly attached to the past. The Leo energy that, of course, the sun and Venus are in, trying to show us where we need to be bold and brave and courageous enough to close the door on the past and start making some moves in a brand new direction for us to make a great change. So we're definitely going to be disconnected from our heart space, from what we thought we loved, from what we thought we were enjoying, what we thought we wanted to do. There is going to be a jolt of energy that really kind of gets our central nervous system going in the worst kind of ways. Anxiety could set in, restlessness, ants in our pants. But pay attention to what it is that you're feeling torn over. Again, a square doesn't feel good, but it does illuminate for us where it is that our ego selves are holding fear, doubts, and insecurities, thus wanting to keep everything the same, and what our higher selves want, which is change, which is peace and harmony and happiness and comfort. So the moon goes ahead, trines Saturn. So Saturn being the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline, Saturn is retrograde in Pisces energy. Again, trying to collapse the old structures, the old foundation, the old belief system, the old ways of doing things. Now, here's the thing. The moon in Cancer energy trining, which means that we're dealing with water on water action here. Cancer energy is water. Pisces energy is water. We're starting to cleanse ourselves. We're starting to purify our heart space, our head space from the attachments that we have to the past. Now, a trine is a gentle nudge in the right direction. Saturn is giving us a little bit of a reality check, but it's not a harsh one. It's a loving one. It's an encouraging one. It's almost like Saturn saying, okay, listen, you can hold on to the dead horse, but the horse isn't waking up. And eventually the horse is going to decay and you are not going to have anything left in your hands. Or you could make peace with it. You could show love and compassion to the horse for the journey that the horse has been on with you. And you can gracefully walk away giving love and affection and not sticking around for the decay. So I know that that was a really gross analogy, but that's just kind of what popped into my head. So go with me here. Um, but basically what we're getting at is that there is a realization within us that yes, we are overly attached to some aspects of our past that essentially is preventing us from moving on, moving forward and identifying what we want to build, what we want to create from here. Because this is a positive energy, there is going to be a major change, a major transformation of our emotions, of our perspective, of our mood and of our attitude. Of course, we're not going to sit in that good energy for very long. The moon is going to semi-square Mercury. Mercury rules over our mental plane, rules over information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury is in his rulership and Virgo energy, but also just days away from going retrograde. So our intellect isn't as strong as it normally is. We're moving into the unconscious realm of our intellect, if you will. And the closer that we get to that retrograde point, and again, if you haven't listened to the August energy forecast, I'm going to recommend you do that. If you haven't downloaded your Zodiac forecast, I'm going to recommend you do that as well so that you know the astro shifts coming at us in August and how it's going to impact your life the most. Either way, Mercury in this Virgo energy, we're over analytical. We're not even factoring in our emotions. We're just kind of looking at life matter of fact. Now, yeah, to a certain extent, that could be helpful. However, the moon in Cancer energy, we're doing nothing but sitting in those fields. And so emotionally speaking, we're on one page. Mentally speaking, we're on the other. Mentally, we kind of are looking at the options, the opportunities. As a matter of fact, what looks good on paper, what makes logical and practical sense. While the moon in Cancer really doesn't care about logic and practicality, we know how we feel and we're not ready to move on just yet. So our heart and our head, not on the same page at all. 
The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring and square off with Chiron, the wounded healer. So this kind of plays off of the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that we sat in at the beginning of the day when Mars and Chiron kind of did their thing. This isn't going to feel good. It's not supposed to. It is going to rip open the scabs, if you will. It is going to reopen the wounds that we were actively healing just when we were thinking positive, just when we were ready to kind of pivot away from the past and start thinking about our future. We get thrown back in it. We are not feeling like we are ready to grow, like we're ready to move on, like we're ready to heal. We're actually doubling down on holding on to that dead horse, which of course is not going to help anyone or anything. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Cancer energy, then semi-squaring, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Mars. So we can kind of expect to end the day off with a little bit of frustration, a little bit of anger. Again, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities are putting us in a state where we're really confused, we're really agitated, but anger can be one of the best tools for wisdom, for clarity. So basically, we have to let our walls down. We have to let our guard down. We have to sit with ourselves, be real, be raw, be vulnerable, and ask our anger, our frustration, our agitation, what we're supposed to be learning. Now, spoiler alert, what we're supposed to be learning is to let the past go, to get out of our own damn way, to stop slowing up the process here and to actually just come to a certain term of acceptance that life is the way that it is. Things in the past happen for a very good reason, pushing us into a place where we get to choose. Are we going to let our past define us or are we going to allow it to help build us into the biggest, strongest, most powerful version of self?